Today is Monday, June the 26th, 2023. My name is Mark Beavis. Welcome to the show. On the program today, if you've ever wondered why you didn't get a job or maybe a raise, maybe it's because your boss was cheating. We're going to look at the program today at a new law that is designed to protect Canadian employees. Plus, a lot of large retailers right now are urging caution for the remainder of 2023. We'll look at that. Also, if you have a variable rate mortgage, maybe it's time to think about possible renewal challenges. And Canada Bread is fined $50 million for its role in price fixing. We're going to discuss all of that today. If you're looking for help with DIY investing, I will also put a link for our investing academy in the description of this video. Let's get started with today's news. As of June 23rd, 2023, in Canada now, agreements between employers to agree to maintain, fix, decrease, or control wages or other terms of employment, or to refrain from hiring or trying to hire one another's employees are illegal. The new rules kicked in on Friday, and this is in an effort to crack down on companies that are undermining competition, and the biggest victims of that, of course, are employees. Anyone convicted of these new types of agreements will now actually have a criminal record. There are two possible consequences to this behavior. First of all, there is a fine that can be imposed and there's no upper limit. It's going to be set at the discretion of the court. There's also now the possibility of prison time. Maximum sentence is 14 years in prison. Worse yet, there is a possible combination of the two. So you could go to jail, you could pay a fine. Very, very serious consequences for this type of behavior. Now, when we think of Canada, the word cartel doesn't usually sort of jump up to the top of our minds. But a cartel forms in its simplest form when two or more parties agree not to compete with one another. This can really be as simple as two business owners getting together and making a verbal agreement literally over lunch at McDonald's. There's an incident that occurred that really seemed to uh, wrap up the focus on this type of issue. On the exact same day in 2020, Loblaw, Sobeys and uh, Metro all ended a bonus program for their hourly workers. Now, the companies told the House of Commons committee later that year that they had acted independently. Sounds a little bit suspicious. But Loblaw's then president, Sarah Davis, she acknowledged that she had sent what she called a courtesy email about the move to competitors in advance. As of this past weekend here in Canada, employers who agree to participate in this type of behavior can end up in a world of hurt. Let's look at a few examples that might now be illegal under the new law. And I've taken these examples from the Government of Canada website. Example number one. Lucy owns a private medical lab and her friend Jerry owns a chemical testing lab. Now, during a lunch meeting, they agree to limit each of their employees' annual bonuses to 5%. That, under the new law, would be illegal, could end up literally in jail time. Let me give you a second example. Company X, in this case, provides staffing and recruitment services. It enters into a staffing agreement with company Y and they're going to provide specialized workers for a short period of time. As part of the contract though, companies X and Y agree not to hire each other's employees while the contract is in effect. To me, that seems reasonable, but it does hurt the opportunities for employees. That behavior under the new law would also potentially be in violation. I'll give you one more example here. Company A, in this case, is in the business of franchising fast food restaurants across Canada. Of course, we can all imagine what company those might be. Company A and each of the franchisees spend a lot of time and money training new employees. So to lower the training costs, Company A and each franchisee in this case, they separately agree that they're not going to poach each other's employees as well as those of other franchisees. Now, importantly here, the franchisees have no direct agreements between themselves, but each franchisee has an understanding that the franchisor will enter into a no poaching agreement with every franchisee within the whole franchise system. Now, in addition to this, the franchisees want to establish a system amongst themselves where they will recoup the training costs if they do in fact uh, poach an employee instead of relying on the franchisor's enforcement of the no poaching restraint. Now under the new law, again, these types of agreements are illegal. It's notable, these rules only apply to unaffiliated employers. So agreements between two or more corporations that are controlled by the same parent company, they do not violate these provisions. There are other exceptions as well, and those can be found on the Government of Canada website. In the retail sector, a number of large retailers have announced low expectations for the remainder of 2023. Macy's, 
Target, and uh, Dollar General. They've recently warned investors about weaker sales that they're anticipating throughout the rest of the year as customers are shifting their spending more towards essentials. Lydia Bosor, she is the senior economist at EY. She says, we expect the slowdown in consumer spending to accelerate in the second half of the year as labor market f- gains falter, the buffer from excess savings shrinks, and credit conditions tighten further. Also, Mark Ursig, who's a CFO at Newell Brands, this is the company that makes Rubbermaid products and it makes uh, Mr. Coffee coffee makers. He also expects sales pressure for at least another 12 months. And during a conference uh, just earlier this month, he said, we continue to expect a challenging macroeconomic environment characterized by high to moderate inflation, which will likely continue to constrain consumer discretionary spending. Again, earlier this month, Macy's cut its 2023 second half forecast after a week Q1 sales and Home Depot cut its profit and sales outlook uh, for the rest of the year as well. So far in 2023, the economy has looked pretty good actually. And I would say enjoy this, participate in it, but don't lose sight of the possible risks that a lot of these bright minds are predicting. I would say, let's face it, all of the companies that I just talked about would much prefer to you know, report good news and glowing expectations. That's what they like to do. But the fact that so many of them are giving the, us these warnings of the trouble ahead should give us all uh, pause. As I noted on this program last week, a lot of Canadians have gotten into a situation where they've extended the amortization of their uh, mortgages in light of the rising interest rate environment that we're in right now. In many cases, people have actually reached the point that they are paying only the interest portion of their mortgages. Now, if you have a variable rate mortgage with fixed income payments, you may hit what's called the trigger point. And this is when the mortgage payment isn't enough to cover the interest that's accumulated since the last payment. Obviously, uh, paying only the interest portion of your mortgage is a sort of a temporary step that can prevent uh, your mortgage from defaulting, but it really is only a band-aid solution and uh, you can't continue along those lines forever. According to the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, around 12% of uninsured mortgages here in Canada are only covering interest payments or in fact are negatively amortizing. CIBC reported in its 2022 annual report that 26% of its residential mortgage portfolio had seen amortizations that are at or exceeding 35 years. And TD Bank as well stated in its 2022 annual report, 25.2% of its residential mortgage portfolio was comprised with loans with amortizations at or exceeding at least 35 years. Now in Canada, there's two types of variable mortgages. In the first scenario, your payment changes along with interest rates. So as interest rates goes up, your payment goes up. There's also a second type with static payments. And in this case, you continue to pay the same amount each payment, but with these static payments, the proportion of interest versus principal changes. In these cases, the length of time that you need to pay the mortgage gets extended. This is where a major potential issue lies on the horizon. What happens when it's time for you to renew your mortgage? Well, normally when it's time for that to occur, it's pretty much automatic. You don't usually need to convince your bank to extend the mortgage to another term. In fact, generally, under normal conditions, you can go around, shop, get a better rate. Usually your bank is going to um, to match that rate just in order to keep the business. The upcoming cycles though of renewals is less certain. Today, uh, these lenders probably aren't going to be as eager to just automatically provide you with a renewal. And in some cases you may need to qualify again at a minimum. You're not gonna be in a position where you can uh, negotiate a better rate. Uh, You're basically gonna be at the mercy of your bank. If you do have a mortgage that is coming up for renewal within the next year or two, it's important to put some focus on that today. If you're in a position that you can't afford a renewal at today's higher rates, you may need to do things like seeking alternative funding, or in a worst case scenario as possible, you may even be forced actually to sell your home, take up alternate housing until things get back to normal. We started today's episode talking about employers cheating their employees, and now we're gonna end with companies cheating us all. Canada Bread, which is one of Canada's largest bread makers, has agreed to pay at least $50 million for its role in colluding to fix the price of bread. In court last week, they acknowledged that under a previous management, it had colluded with its competitors in Canada's banking industry. The company is now owned by Mexico's Grupo Bimbo, but at the time of these events, it was controlled uh, by 
Maple Leaf Foods. According to an agreed upon statement of facts, an executive at Canada Bread, who was also an officer at Maple Leaf Foods at the time, had discussions about prices for bread products with one or more senior executives at Weston Foods, which is was a subsidiary of George Weston Limited which now also controls the Loblaw grocery chain. According to these court documents, executives talked about raising prices in June 2007 and agreed to do so between six and seven cents per loaf starting in October of that year. Then a few years later in November of 2010, again, they agreed to raise the prices by seven cents a loaf starting in January or March of 2011. But I guess since the first scam worked so well, they met again in January of 2011 and agreed to double the amount to 14 cents a loaf starting in February, higher prices earlier, you know, a win-win for the companies until they got caught. Now this whole scandal first came to light in 2015. Loblaw and Weston at the time agreed to cooperate with the Competition Bureau in exchange for immunity from prosecution. As a result of this cooperation, the Bureau subsequently executed search warrants against a number of companies, including Weston Loblaw, Metro Inc., Sobeys, Walmart Canada, Overweighty Food, Giant Tiger Stores, and Canada Bread. The investigation into these companies is ongoing according to these court documents. Now, although Loblaw was granted immunity for its misdeeds, it did offer to give customers a $25 gift card when the story first broke a number of years ago. I know I remember getting one of those. I wonder if you did as well. Grupo Bimbo bought Canada Bread back in 2014 and it says in a statement that it only learned about these price fixing arrangements after the Competition Bureau had executed its search warrant against Canada Bread on October 31st, 2017. Coming up later this week on Tuesday, tomorrow, Canada's CPI numbers are released. Alimentation Coutard will announce its earnings. I know a lot of our viewers own that company, so we'll keep you up to date on that. Uh, Wednesday, Micron Technology announces its earnings. Thursday, Nike will report and the US GDP numbers are out. If you live in or near Calgary, reminder, the Blossom Social Meetup is set for July 17th there. We had an awesome time at our meetup in Vancouver a month or so ago. We look forward to meeting a lot of our uh, members in Alberta uh, in July. Also, we will be in Toronto and Montreal in August. Now, I will be back with my next update in two days on Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you.